So our job at the Jaffe Food Allergy Institute to begin with is to diagnose the food allergy. And that's a big process because you don't want to be avoiding a food that you don't need to avoid. And you also want to know if there's a food out there that might be of danger to your child. And we need to identify that. So we're very, very cautious about our diagnostic routine. We want to make sure we get it right and make sure that we listen to your story very carefully. We do the diagnostic tests we need to do, including sometimes feeding tests where we watch your child eat the food to make sure that we know and you know what your child should and shouldn't eat. We also want to make sure that you know how to use medications in cases of an allergic reaction. So it's very important to lear learn when to use self-injectable epinephrine, how to use it, and when to get to the emergency room for more treatment. Having said all of that, a lot of the education about management of food allergy has to do with not eating the food that you're allergic to. And that sounds easier said than done. So for example, I might say to you, well, don't eat peanuts. Okay, I won't eat peanuts, but there's a lot more to it. What if in my home I have peanut butter and someone makes a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and they stick the knife from the peanut butter into the jelly, now there's peanut butter there. If I make my child a jelly sandwich that has peanut allergy, they're going to have some leftover peanut in that jar. There's a problem. We call this cross contact. And so learning about these things like making sure that you don't put a utensil from one item that has an allergen to another, um, if you're chopping something that's an allergen on a chopping board, you better clean it off before you put something that's supposed to be safe for the child who's going to eat it. Or better yet, make the safe food first before dealing with the other allergens. If you're going to um, be buying food for someone with an allergy, whether it's in a restaurant or in a supermarket, you have to understand this cross-contact issue as well. Um, and you have to also talk about the allergy. So if we consider restaurant eating, you would want to identify to the server that your child has an allergy that it's not just that they don't like the food, but they really could have a, an illness from it and you don't want them to be going to the emergency room for this meal. So you need to talk to someone who prepares the food, that they really know what's in it or what's not in it. Make sure that they understand about cross contact. So if they were, if you have a child with a milk allergy and they are making a cheeseburger on the grill and then your hamburger that's not supposed to have milk on it is right there and gets cheese on it, there's a problem. So they need to know all of those details and you have to really have that full discussion about allergy in the restaurant and not just go by what the menu says but really talk to them. And then when you're buying products you have to read the label and you have to read it every time because sometimes ingredients change. So the labeling laws which actually um, some of our studies were were used to help create those labeling laws um, now cover all of the major allergens. What do I mean by major allergens? It's the ones that cause most of the problems for most of the people. It's not everything. But the labeling laws cover milk, egg, wheat, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. Those are the ones that cause most of the trouble. And now it has to say on plain English on the label if it's an ingredient. So if it's a milk ingredient, it has to have the word milk somewhere. If it's egg, it has to have the word egg. If it's nuts, it has to say what kind. So like walnut, almond, or Brazil. If it's fish, it has to say what kind, like tuna, salmon, or cod, or shellfish, shrimp, or lobster. Now, there are some things that are not covered by the labeling laws, every other food. So, you know, if your child's allergic to sesame or non-crustacean shellfish or some spice, that's not part of the labeling laws. It might be hidden in a word like macon, it might be hidden in a word like um, spices or natural flavor, something like that. But most of the foods are, that are problematic are covered. The other thing about the labeling laws that's not totally covered is what we call advisory or provisional labeling. You've probably seen may contain peanuts or in a facility that contains peanuts. Our studies are showing that 17% of products have labels like that now. And in some areas like convenience foods, it's 40%. So this could be very frustrating for the allergic consumer. But our studies are showing that about 7 to 10% of the time, on average, there is some of that food in there, albeit in very small amounts. So you have to talk to your allergist about um, all of these, acts, all of these uh, issues and make sure that you're not buying the products that might be unsafe for your child. Um, having said all of that, I want to also point out that it's very important to talk to a, a board-certified allergist about this, whether you're coming to the Jaffe Institute or not, because as you can already tell, there are so many nuances in day-to-day -day management, especially for a child who's going to school or camps, and all of these provisions have to be translated to those places as well when a parent isn't right there.